Hello all, I'm Professor Dragon Illich from the School of Public Health and Preventive Medicine and welcome to this uh, online presentation um, in which we're going to focus on predictive values. So here are the objectives for Module 3 um, and what we're going to focus on um, I guess is the first um, uh, objective here, interpreting diagnostic measures. So in the previous uh, video, um, we focused on sensitivity and specificity. Um, and one of the limitations that we highlighted was that sensitivity and specificity only relate to the test itself. Um, it doesn't provide us with any information regarding um, whether or not um, a, a patient um, has an increased or decreased probability of having a disease. This is where predictive values come into play. Um, so we have both positive and negative predictive values. So a positive predictive value is basically saying um, for a patient um, who has a positive test, what is the probability that they do have the disease? So if we go through our two by two table again, we kind of flip it um, uh, in the sense of um, how we calculate sensitivity and specificity. So rather than going vertically, with predictive values, we're looking at things horizontally. So in this case, we're saying for all of those who tested positive, what are the chances that they actually do have the disease? Or what's the probability that they do have the disease? Um, and so the formula there is um, A divided by A plus B. So again, we've got a um, hypothetical two by two table. Um, we've got disease positive, negative, we've got a positive test outcome and a negative test result. Um, and so in order to calculate our positive predictive value, um, we've got our number who have tested positive and do have the disease divided by the total number um, who tested positive. <clears throat> so in this case, the positive predictive value is 64%. So basically what this is saying, um, if you do test positive to this particular test, um, you've got a 64% chance of actually having the disease or having the outcome of interest. Negative predictive values um, are the flip side. So for a patient um, with a negative test result, what's the probability that they do not have the disease? So once again, we've got our two by two table. Um, in this case, we're focused in on our true negatives. So again, we've got our disease um, absent, disease present. Um, we've got our test positive and test negative. So in order to calculate our negative predictive value, uh, we're looking at all of those um, that tested negative, uh, sorry, um, and don't have uh, the disease, divided by all of those um, who tested negative. So this two by two table, again, with the same hypothetical numbers, um, has been um, drawn to illustrate the, um, the, the negative predictive value. So once again, disease, um, yes or no, um, either people test positive or negative to the test. And so what we're looking at, and what we're really interested in, um, is the true negative divided by the total negative. So in this case, um, the negative predictive value is 94%. So what it's basically saying is if you test negative uh, to this test, um, there's a 94% chance that you don't have the disease or outcome or whatever it may be of interest. So on the surface, predictive values seem pretty good. Um, and for the most part, they are. Um, the one limitation, and it's quite a major limitation at that, is that um, the predictive value will vary with prevalence. So while sensitivity and specificity doesn't change uh, because it only relates to the test uh, characteristics, predictive values will change depending on where um, these values have been formulated in terms of um, countries and locations. Um, and that's because they're dependent on the prevalence of a particular condition. So this first example, um, we're, we're, again, we've got the same hypothetical numbers. Um, and I guess the thing to take out of it is um, the prevalence in this case um, is 33%. Sensitivity and specificity, 90 and 75% predictive values uh, are what we calculated. Um, if we were to compare it 
um, that is run the same test, uh, but in, let's say, a different country, um, where the prevalence of this particular condition was higher, um, so 50%, the sensitivity and the specificity remains the same. Um, so the test characteristics always remain the same. But what you can see here is an increase and a decrease, respectively, um, in the positive predictive and negative predictive values. So this is where predictive values um, uh, have, have some sort of limitation. So unless those predictive values are context specific, um, you may be, um, uh, they may be distorted um, when you're trying to apply them to your particular um, context. So that's all we've got on predictive values. Uh, the third and final video in this series relates to likelihood ratios um, and we'll cover um, why we use likelihood ratios and their um, strengths um, in the next um, slide. Um, if you've got any questions or queries, as usual, please feel free to contact me um, on the email address um, shown uh, on that slide. Thank you.